when we talk about selecting feeds and evaluating feeds, it's important to be able to understand and read the labels that come with these manufactured feeds or pellets or whatever you might have. Nearly all of them have the, the same flow and it's kind of a regulated uh, aspect as well as from labeling. But the first thing they'll normally always have on the label is the crude protein content. And that's a guaranteed analysis. Normally it'll be that or perhaps a little higher uh, sometimes. But for the most part, these are formulated to be at or somewhere around that uh, guaranteed level. If you notice on this tag, it's listed as a minimum of 12% based on the ingredient cost or whatever. It may actually be cheaper for them to formulate a, a feed that might be a little higher than that in protein and still meet the other label uh, requirements. Next is listed crude fat. It's also listed as a minimum. Uh, in this particular one, it's a 3% fat, which is kind of a normal range on fat content in a lot of feeds. Uh, once again, it can range and vary from if they're using rice bran or whatever, it may actually elevate the fat level in a ration above that. Uh, in beef cattle nutrition, that's not really a problem. When we get into issues in equine nutrition and elevated fat contents and some other things may come into play a little more, but we like to, to know at least what that minimum level is. Next is a measure of fiber content, crude fiber, maximum level of, in this particular feed, of 13%. Uh, that refers to the ingredients that go in, and it's somewhat confusing now because of wheat mid, soybean hulls that have a fiber content that's not just indigestible fiber. So we, we really need to then, once we look at the fiber content on a feed, we also have to refer to the ingredients to know exactly what that's going to mean from an energy standpoint. Uh, back when, before we started using a lot of those feeds, the fiber content was a really good indicator of overall energy value of that feed. Now it's going to be probably lower than what the actual energy value might be in some of the feed stuffs. Uh, once we have the protein, fat, and fiber, the next thing that would be listed in there would be uh, the mineral content of these, calcium. They'll normally have a minimum and maximum level of calcium listed on the tag, phosphorus salt content, uh, potassium, and, and vitamin content on these particular feeds. So those are the ones that would be listed here on the label. As you look down through here, the crude protein, fat, fiber. Once again, those are indications of what the formulation guarantees as a minimum or maximum level. Below that on a feed tag, you'll have the ingredient list. And there's not as much restriction perhaps in that as it would be in the actual formulation and calculation. But it'll normally list the main ingredients first, uh, grain products, it can be in descriptive in some of these feeds. Uh, if it's all corn-based ration, it might have corn listed, but it'll have grain products, molasses products, roughage products, and they can be from varying sources. That allows a lot of flexibility in the manufacturing of feeds to where you're not limited to changing your label every time you change ingredients in the formulation of a feed. And once again, the unique ability of the cow to take various feedstuffs and convert them into a meat product or milk product is something that is really uh, advantageous to the industry. So it doesn't really matter what those particular products are uh, that go into that ration as long as these crude protein, fiber, and fat levels are met.